Who really pays for our government debt? There is often a lot of alarm and anxiety when we talk about a country's government debt. But as we will learn, this fear of government debt, sometimes referred to as public debt or the national debt, is completely unfounded. When many of us think of government debt, we envisage our own private finances. We know as citizens that saving is important and that we should live within our means. We know that borrowing too much is risky and that taking on too much debt may lead to a situation where we cannot afford to pay this debt back. This frightening scenario can then spiral into bankruptcy, mortgage default, repossession and even prison. But private debt, which we are right to be careful of, is nothing like government debt. As we have learned previously, a currency issuing government floating its currency is not financially constrained, only resource constrained. When we talk of government debt, what we are really referring to is government bonds denominated in the currency of the government issuing the bond. A government bond is a guarantee that can be purchased by a private bank or other financial institution that says the government will repay the original amount plus interest after the agreed bond period expires, or as they say, matures. This bond is a risk-free investment for these financial institutions because it is guaranteed by the government. When debt is issued on the bond market by the Australian Office of Financial Management on behalf of the Australian Treasury, the government is issuing debt in Australian dollars, supposedly to raise funds. But if the government is not financially constrained, why do we think it issues debt to raise funds? In the past, many economies fixed the value of their currency to a limited resource, often gold, which was called being on the gold standard. The amount of currency they could create without their currency losing value was controlled by the amount of gold they had. If a government on this system wanted to spend more than it collected without dropping the value of its money, it did need to borrow, just like we would. Except they would achieve this borrowing by selling bonds. Eventually, most developed nations abandoned the gold standard and no longer had a limit on how much new currency they could create. Although a lot of people continue to talk as though these countries are still on the gold standard. But once countries had floated their currencies, there was no need to sell government debt any longer. So why do treasuries continue to issue government debt? Unlike taxation, which removes currency from the economy to prevent inflation, bond issuance by the treasury in most modern economies helps to take currency out of the private banking system to maintain the targeted interest rate set by the treasury and its central bank. When the government spends, this spending creates excess digital dollars, or reserves, in the private banking system. And unless these reserves are removed on a daily basis, the overnight interest rate will fall. So the government steps in and sells bonds to soak up these reserves from the private banks and other financial institutions, who then buy the bonds with the excess reserves and the overnight interest rate is maintained. Once we know this, we see that the government does not need to issue bonds at all, and not much would change, except that the financial institutions could hold their savings at the central bank in term deposit accounts, rather than holding government debt in the form of bonds. Therefore, not only is the selling of government debt a political decision, but government debt is merely the amount owed to private sector bondholders who have purchased government bonds. Since we know that currency issuing governments can pay any debt owing in their own currency, when these bonds mature, the bondholders accounts are credited with the original amount plus the interest owed by the government and this portion of government debt is paid off at no cost to any taxpayer. So when politicians and journalists talk about the government debt or the public debt or the national debt and the big scary number that we're often told is unsustainable, it is important to remember that this outstanding debt is not a debt to our children or our grandchildren. The government's debt is simply factored into the federal budget each year when bonds from previous years mature, meaning the bondholder has their investment returned to them with interest. 
Paying off this so-called debt is as simple as crediting accounts at the central bank. So next time a politician tries to equate the government's debt with your own household debt, by arguing the currency issue in government needs to tighten its belt and live within its means, you know that they are making a political decision not to spend, and that it has nothing to do with their ability to pay for anything the government could want. Subscribe for more videos like this, and comment to join the conversation.